Welcome guys, we're going to be doing this in a different format than I usually do for videos. We're going to be talking about the hunters and survivors that came out in 2022. There were six characters that came out in total, four survivors and two hunters. Only two hunters in 2022, I was surprised about that too. So let's do it by release date. So first character that was released in 2022 was Weeping Clown. He came out in January, so just around a year ago from today. Let's talk quickly about which hunters that Weeping Clown is strong against, because then we can talk a little bit about his weaknesses after. Weeping Clown has his rocket that lets him transition away from things, so this means that any character that doesn't do very well in base chasing or has an ability that once it, if it misses or doesn't land directly he can use uh, to kind of get away is going to be something that he's very strong against. One of the first characters that I put here on my my list i think he is very very strong against bloody queen this may seem a bit strange because yeah oh he can get hit by the mirror the point is that the mirror is a very fickle thing and if you miss it then you have to wait a massive cooldown i can't remember if it's 12 seconds just to be able to use your ability again because without that you have nothing else you're just a base chase hunter so what you'll often see is that weeping clowns as soon as they get mirrored on they'll quickly hop onto their rocket and they'll kind of zoom away this means that bloody queen cannot catch up with her mirror and it's even more difficult to hit when the character is moving extra fast. I also put that he's strong against Photographer. This is mostly because Photographer doesn't have any other ability apart from the photo world. Since Joseph doesn't really have much that he can do in chase, he can just base chase, having this ability to zoom away really ruins Photographer's chase if he's actually trying to deal with them. In the same vein we have Dream Witch. I wouldn't say that it's one of his strongest matchups. I think the ability once again well, to transition away from one of those kind of characters like leeches that uh, Dream Witch has taken over or the main body or something like that does mean that you can just continuously transition away from them and since they don't have any other type of chase except for patroller patroller is where it gets a little bit confusing maybe the uh, patroller does interact a little bit with his rocket but as long as you've kind of uh, used up the patroller or something like that well i think he's pretty strong overall this is why i don't think it's his strongest matchup dream witch is a little bit of a weird one she can be strong in some situations against moving clown and in others not so much and the last character i've got here that he's strong against is Helember for the same reason that the other characters are in this list here too. Mostly the problem with Helember is his early game right? If Helember doesn't have a very good early game then he is doomed and Helember really does suffer if he finds someone and he cannot get them and since he is just a base chase hunter until he gets all of his rage Weeping Clown really denies him from getting any type of presence and also could possibly get far away enough that Helember doesn't even get the chase ability of getting his rage. So this is why I've put him up here. I think I think it's a pretty good matchup against him even in the late game you can help with maybe a teammate who's getting away from one of the red puppets or from the hunter in general or just stun the main hunter letting them get away from the puppets a little bit easier or something like that i think it's a really good matchup there's no ability really that helember has that can be able to counter the fact that he's going to be zooming away on his rocket now that we've talked a little bit about how his rocket is really really important well this is where his issue lies we're going to be talking now about where he is weak and who he's weak against and that is anyone that can counter his rocket one of the things that made sure that he wasn't meta was the fact that so many things could counter his rocket and i think one of the most notable ones especially if you've played any weeping clown is that you'll notice that naiad is very very strong against weeping clown maybe not so much as in the water area because you know you can use the rocket to get out of the water that is important because naiad can suffer sometimes from transition kiting but one of the things is when she gets to her second presence she can use her water dash and that water dash completely kicks you out of your rocket dash and you can't look behind with weeping clown so you can't see if she's aiming or lining up your turn radius isn't tight enough for you to be able to kind of dodge her mid dash so it means that you'll just be kicked off of your rocket without having ever used it properly and she's got a pretty fast attack animation so it'll be much more difficult to be able to quickly dodge with that little zoom boost Wu Chang does the very same thing I would say that weeping clown is really good against Wu Chang in the early game but as soon as that Wu Chang gets any sort of presence he just gets that first presence ability using the bell instantly kicks you off of your rocket and it's not very difficult to aim weeping clown doesn't really dodge to the left or right he kind of dodges tiny bits to the left and tiny bits to the right so it's good in the early game not good in the late game compared to hell amber where it's good in the early game and pretty decent in the late game that's why i think it's it's really strong against hell amber it's not good against wu chang at all especially since even if you do manage to rocket away he misses that uh, bell 
Wu-Tang can just use his umbrella and teleport to wherever you're going to land because it's pretty easy to see which way you're going. Hermit is up next as well and Hermit has a similar style ability where he can just stun you out of your rocket and with Hermit you get stuns way more often than you get your bells. This is a big problem for Weeping Clown here because he'll just stun instantly you out of your rocket and any teammates that you have with you too. I put Breaking Wheel here because I think that Breaking Wheel's wheel ability of being able to roll over the Weeping Clown does kick him off of his rocket. You, I might need someone else to confirm that because I'm not 100% sure about it. I believe that Weeping Clown does get kicked off of his rocket when he gets reeled over. That is pretty easy to do once again for a Breaking Wheel because he goes much faster than the rocket does. Gamekeeper, same story, can use his hook to easily get you. It's not too difficult to aim and hit a Weeping Clown because they're moving so slowly from left to right. You just need to more or less center it up and you'll be fine. Now let's get into some of those characters that have some sort of chip damage that can deal damage to him and kick him off of his rocket. That would be characters like Sculptor, Guard 26, Soul Weaver, that in the case of Soul Weaver can just catch up to your rocket if they just put some of their webs down carefully. Clerk, that I've seen multiple clips of Clerk kicking Weeping Clowns off with uh, their rocket using the recording thing. It's very easy to do, not that difficult at all. Mad Eyes is an example. Feaster is an example here. Geisha can just catch up directly with her butterflies. It's really, really easy. You just put the butterfly onto the Weeping Clown, wait until they've dashed away. You just follow behind them. And in the same vein, you also have Evil Reptilian. Just jump a couple of times and you've covered all the distance. The next character to be released was Clerk that was released in March. Of course Clerk is meta so please tell me down below if you think any of these characters that I'm going to be talking about are actually better than I say they are or even worse. Of course these are all my personal opinions. I would say that Clerk is really strong against Weeping Clown. We've just talked a little bit about it here why she can just clip him off of his rocket and Weeping Clown has that slow decoding as well that just doesn't really help us that much in the matches either so that's one of the reasons why he is really Really, really weak against and that's it really i don't think there are any other characters that are specifically really really weak against clerk clerk is a bit of a kind of middle of the road in like she's really really good at slowing down cypher machines that's why she's so good it gives her more time for that reason i don't think there's anybody else that is uh kind of specifically weak against clerk but we do have quite a lot of characters in my opinion that are strong against clerk or are stronger than other characters the first one we've got is explorer explorer is really really good against clerk because clerk has the ability to be able to slow down cypher machines, block them and stop people from using them. But an explorer has the ability to go and find pages around the map and then as soon as the clerk stops watching and isn't kind of recording someone, Explorer can just finish a cypher machine. A lot of this usual time that is wasted when you're playing against a clerk uh, of you just standing there waiting for the cypher machine to be able to be open so you can decode it doesn't really affect Explorer as he can go and get some pages and just save up some progress that can be easily used in the late game to pop those cypher machines. Prisoner is kind of similar as he can decode cypher machines that he's connected to. He doesn't need to be on the blocked cypher machine. He can still be decoding it. So this is something really, really good. And he also has the ability to kite with his electric shock that is one of Clerk's general weaknesses as she doesn't really have too much for the chase until she's got some recordings saved up. I put Mind's Eye here not because I can think of any specific reason as to why she's stronger against the Clerk. I think it's mostly just because she can decode so quickly. As soon as the Cypher Machine is available and is she's not being recorded, she has the ability to decode immediately and get quite a lot of the progress done that can mess around with Clerk's timing a little bit. Mechanic, in my opinion, is same as Prisoner. You can split up some of the decoding, although it's a little bit more difficult to do. I think you need to be way more careful and you know things can go wrong quite quickly when your mechanic is you're not paying attention to your main body and it gets very very confusing but I think overall it's not a bad character to be using. Dancer is pretty decent because she can use her kiting abilities as well as her decoding abilities and she can leave boxes around for teammates to use on their cypher machines so she can really do well and surprise the clerk by getting cypher machines done very very quickly or helping teammates do the same. And then of course we've got Postman as well that has the same ability of being able to help decoding and also has the ability to help with kiting or kite himself using his dog as well. Priestess is really really good because she can use her portals to be able to get away from the clerk who's watching from above. As soon as you see that clerk watching you, you just pop through the portal you put on your cypher machine and they won't be able to record you as you're hiding behind a building or a wall or something like that. Little girl can teleport around the map, go and choose a different cypher machine if she wants to to go and help someone out and she has that extra decoding buff that's really really important and she's just really good at helping out with kiting as well that can be 
Clerks issue as well. And I wasn't sure what to, where to put Novelist. I think that Novelist is pretty strong against Clerk because he can get those Cypher Machines done pretty quickly, or at least the first half, that can lead to you being able to kind of get uh, teammates to be able to decode Cypher Machines faster. And also he has the ability to be able to kite, but I think the fact that he can just decode faster, that first half of the Cypher Machine, means that you can prime multiple Cypher Machines faster if necessary. I wouldn't say it's a really strong character against Clerk. Mercenary in my opinion, and forward, Bata, and of course Cowboy as well. These characters in my opinion are pretty good against Clerk because once she's got someone in balloons, she is helpless, there's nothing that she can really do. And of course, rescuing is really, really good in general against Clerk. So let's talk a little bit about Professor's characters that he's really really strong against. I think you guys probably already have an idea about which one he's strong against because his shield ability is his main ability. He does have that passive ability of being able to protect against chip hits for a little bit but only works once. The characters that I think the professor is strongest against most notably the, f the first one that came to mind was Geisha because Geisha has such a long attack animation that it's really really easy to use your shield to be able to block a hit and Geisha only has base chase abilities. She has no chip hit abilities that means Means that she can't really do anything about the professor. She just has to kind of try and trick him into using his shield but most professors can just see the animation of the attack coming and use it at the perfect time and then Geisha has just got to watch you transition away, maybe use a butterfly again but it's still pretty bad in my opinion. Photographer has that same issue where he's just a base chase hunter and his animation is relatively easy to see as well. You can use that shield and now Photographer has to wait quite a while for him to be able to catch up again. Nightmare is again another character that is all about that base chase. He's a little bit harder to predict when to use your shield on, but since his whole ability revolves around being able to be dashed to, you know, he uses his base attack is his whole ability, means that if you time it well, and if you're someone who plays this character very well, you know how to play Professor, you can block Nightmare quite easily and get away and he's no way of catching up unless he uses one of his ravens but they're very very valuable for him to be able to slow down the exegates the cypher machines and just to kind of be able to transition and map control meaning that he hasn't really got anything he can do against a professor if a wild time shield is used. Wu Chang has the same issue and this is why I'm and I'm going to be putting him here because he really suffers in the early game, but he has also no damage abilities at all. His bell doesn't damage. His soul siphon doesn't damage. All he can do is base hit, especially if he's in the white guard form. You can use your shield to block his hits because you can see the animation coming from quite a while away, especially if he's using a charged hit. That is something that white guard forms will use quite often. If it's the black form, it's a little bit harder to be able to see it coming, but you can still time it well if you're looking behind and if you're really, really careful. Maybe if you get hit by the bell, you'll be able to get hit easily but they are going to have to waste their abilities to be able to even try and get a hit on you in the first place that is a good thing i also think the gamekeeper has some issues playing against professor partly because when he gets his damage hit ability the first hook will just bounce off of the professor won't count will put his ability on cooldown and even if he does get hooked and pulled towards the gamekeeper the professor can just use his shield timing it right meaning that the gamekeeper won't get that advantage of using the hook in the first place he'll get pushed away and stuck as well. Yes, the Professor will be slowed a tiny bit for the beginning, but will have a lot of room to transition. Professor is really weak against Nyad, and this is because Nyad has first of all damage that is not from her main attack, and also her main attack is incredibly difficult to predict. You have to have incredibly fast reflexes. It's almost impossible to be able to see her attack coming and block it in time, especially with ping that's something that NAEU servers suffer with quite a lot. So for this reason, I think, well, her water damage and her main attack being really, really difficult to be able to shield from means that he's really weak against Nyad. Soul Weaver, although the first shot that she uses with her web shot will be blocked, from then on, you'll get hit by those other webs. And she also has the ability to speed up and also be really unpredictable. She can zoom around and hit you when you least expect it, meaning that this is really difficult for Professor to deal with. He can't really deal with a Soul Weaver zooming around, hitting him before he even notices it. It's just way too difficult. Axeboit has an extra way of damaging him using the fireball. This is one of the reasons why we're putting Axeboit up here. And also his attack animation is pretty difficult to be able to predict as well. His attack animation that's charged is easier, but he's quite fast with his swing. He swings very, very quickly. You have to guess if they're going to hit. And that's not a good thing. Guessing just means that you're trying to mind game someone who's trying to mind game you. Smiley face is really, really strong against Professor. This is because he, can, he doesn't actually need to use his basic attacks to be able to deal with 
with the professor. He can use one of his rocket dashes, even use it as a charge hit and kind of bait some of the hits out under the shields from the professor, meaning that smiley face is really, really good. He can zoom around. He has no type of chip damage that he deals. So there's no way that that kind of base passive ability is going to help smiley face. Really, really good. And also really good at camping against an incoming rescuer, for example, that is professor because professor cannot shield any of it. It's going to be a big problem for him. I put hermit here, not because, you know, his attack animation is slower or something or faster or anything like that, but mostly because the stuns. You're never going to get the chance to use your shield against the hermit that knows you're playing professor. They're always going to like stun you and you can't use your shields while you're stunned. It's a big problem for you. So that's a big thing that counters him. You can never get your chance to use it. And then last, for the same reason as I've got Hermit here, we've got Disciple. They'll negate your abilities, they'll stun you. There's not really much you can do. If you do get the chance to be able to use your shield against a Disciple, you do have a better chance as her attack animation is quite slow. It's not super, super fast, but generally you're not going to get the chance to do that. Okay, the next character to be released after Professor was the Antiquarian, a lot of people's favorite character I know. Let's talk a little bit about which characters she is really, really strong against. Geisha really does suffer against a good Antiquarian because once again, she is a base chase character and Antiquarian has the ability to be able to stun you and stuff like that against walls and you can't use any type of ability to deal damage whilst you're in your recovery state, disarmed or whatever. So she just has to wait with the butterflies, watch as the Antiquarian gets away you can jump over a wall, get away from the geisha, mess around with her. Geisha also does have quite a decent camping strategy, so you can also deal with that as well. This is one of the reasons why Antiquarian is really, really strong against her. Dream Witch suffers against Antiquarian because of the fact that you can actually push multiple leeches out of the way. That's really good when you're trying to deal with a camping situation, but also just because Dream Witch has base chase abilities. She doesn't have anything else. Of course, Patroller does mess around a little bit with you, but you can vault over windows using your spin attack or you can use your movement speed to be able to just kind of transition 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 away from the dream witch there's nothing really the dream witch can do she can try and block windows and that does work against antiquarian but it's a very strange but you do need to time it right and there's no real risk for the antiquarian getting hit and terror shocked in the early game for example photographer is really someone that she's really strong against again he has nothing that he can do outside of hitting you with his main ability so once he's disarmed and stunned or something like that if he gets a long chase he's almost doomed so this means that it's a really bad chase for him to deal with. Wu Chang has the same issue as Joseph because again, base chase, really bad chase in the beginning is to go against an Antiquarian because you'll get stunned. You won't even be able to use any of your abilities because you don't have any abilities. You just have your switching form. Really, really bad. And if you get soul siphoned, well, before you get soul siphoned, the uh, Antiquarian can just push you to the side. You just have to watch as the Antiquarian runs off. Nothing you can really do. Feaster suffers quite a lot against an Antiquarian. But, uh, one of Antiquarian's main abilities as well is that she can use her push ability to be able to get rid of items on the map. Meaning you can get rid of those annoying tentacles that maybe a Feaster set up to try and hit you or something like that. And you can also see a Feaster's attack animation coming that you can quickly just bonk him out the way. And there's not really much that he can do about it. It's just a really bad problem for the Feaster. I think that Breaking Wheel is pretty weak against Antiquarian because Antiquarian has the same type of ability that the Enchantress does. And one of the reasons why Enchantress was played in previous tournaments it was mostly to counter the Breaking Breaking wheel because you could stun him before he used one of his uh, explosion form and he kind of uh, lets out all the spikes around him, meaning that you can just whack him out the way as soon as he's using his wheel form to transform out and give everyone spikes. Really, really good against camping breaking wheels. They just have to stay in wheel form and try and get spikes on both of you. And then you can just harass him as soon as he tries to get out of wheel form and use his click. You can vault windows really, really quickly. That means that the wheel form won't be able to catch up very, very well. Let's talk a little bit about which characters Antiquarian is weak against and I think that there are quite a few characters. We've got Nyad first of all I think is that she just has the ability to be able to deal damage to her outside of her radius and she has a fast attack animation. She has other things that she can do. She can use her dash. She can zone you. There's not really much that you can do but the Nyad doesn't really need to be anywhere near you and can also just deal with you from afar. I wouldn't say she's super strong against Antiquarian but overall I think that Nyad is pretty good against Antiquarian. Sculptor again really really strong you might see people trying to hit the statues out of the way 
away, but there are usually too many statues for you to hit, and you don't really need to use your normal attack as Sculptor at all. So if they do disarm you, the Antiquarian hits you into a wall and you do get disarmed, you can just use your statues and bombard them, especially if you're at full presence. Not much that the Antiquarian can do, apart from maybe try and avoid the statues by hitting some of them out of the way, but they'll probably get hit by something else. Smiley Face is pretty good against Antiquarian too, because he's too fast for an Antiquarian to hit. You'll often see that Smiley Faces just don't give enough time for the Antiquarian to do to deal with if you do go go against a strong smiley face. If you're going against a smiley face that's very predictable then of course that is fine. As soon as the smiley face sees an Antiquarian they'll just zoom towards them with the rocket, maybe do a little trick so that the Antiquarian uses their uh, little kind of cane up and you just hit them with the ability. If they do disarm you you can still use your rocket dash because that doesn't count as an attack that is an ability. It just means that the Antiquarian has nothing that she can do. And Nightmare. Nightmare has his ability of being able to dash forwards but it's so fast and he doesn't actually need to be in range of the cane to be able to be hit to be able to dash forwards and get hit so you can as a nightmare be very patient mind game it out and just hit the antiquarian when you least expect it and there's nothing they can do yes if you are a nightmare and you're close nearby to the antiquarian and you get stunned now you have nothing that you can do that is true the next character to come out was hermit he came out in august last year. Hermit, as we've already talked about, has quite a lot of strengths in general. Hermit is strong against Thief, in my opinion. Thief, really generally a weak character, even after the amount of buffs that they've given him recently. He still has the issue of having to be pretty close to the hunter to be able to negate their abilities, or just to be able to get the stuns off. The Hermit doesn't have to be near you to be able to get that stuff, so bad idea for to play a thief against the Hermit in my opinion. Unless you're doing some type of good assisting, but then the Hermit will usually deal with you pretty easily. I think that Hermit is also pretty strong against Professor, as we've already, already talked about. I think we don't need to explain that already. Go and watch the bit about Professor. We talked about why he's good against Weeping Clown already, go and check that bit out as well. I think he's also pretty good against Forward as well, because Forward has the ability to try and rescue you from balloons. The problem with, like for example, when you're going against a good Disciple, is that they'll put the cats at their feet, meaning whilst they're picking up the balloon, Forward will try and dash in and they'll get stunned as soon as they get anywhere near the Hunter, meaning they won't land that kind of ball stun on the Hunter and they'll just get stunned themselves and hit by the Hunter. Hamit can do the same thing Thing, he can blast the opposite charge at his foot and if you come anywhere near him and with your dash you won't hit the hunter instead you'll just get stunned by the electricity and you can get hit whilst you're in your dash he can set up areas where you won't be able to dash towards in or escape from and it just means that in general not that good and he has slow decoding so not very strong at all but not necessarily a bad choice, but just a bit risky if you're using him for that kind of his abilities in the way that they're intended. And Mechanic really, really, really suffers against Hermit because of the ability to be able to split damage. As soon as someone gets hit in the early game, that means that now everyone has been damaged once and Mechanic now has tons of minus decoding. She has, of course, the, she does have the ability to put her doll on some other Cypher machine to be able to split up the progress a little bit more, but her she will have she will definitely be the slowest decoder a few minutes into the match already, and that's really, really bad. Novelist, not very good against a hermit at all as well, because Novelist, to be able to use his abilities, he has to be in range of seeing the hermit, and hermit will stun you, so you will probably never get the chance to be able to use your abilities. You might be able to use your fast decoding in the early game to be able to kind of speed up the cipher machines, as it will take you much longer to be able to get that cipher machine done. Um, so you'll have your decoding buff for much, much longer and that'll be spread out between different cipher machines. But the fact that his main ability of kiting just isn't good at all and similar to Thief just can't be used puts him really in a bad place against the Hermit. Wildling is in the same situation as forward can't use his harass bit abilities and he'll get stunned out of his ball you can't even kite with him he's okay in the fact that maybe you'll be able to assist by taking some hits for your teammates but in general not a good idea to play him he's too slow of a decoder to be able to help his teammates out now which characters is hermit weak against now that's a different question barmaid barmaid has the ability to heal up her teammates but you do need to be very careful with those heals if that person that you're healing does have the same 
charges someone who's kiting, then the heal is probably going to be useless, they're going to get hit anyway, meaning that the heal will just get cancelled or won't have any type of effect. But if you are careful with your heals, she's really, really good at dealing with those chip damages that you might have for the rescuer, for example, that might need to go in and is one hit away. You'll just be able to heal them up, heal up the decoder, heal up someone to give them some more time. And she has the ability to kind of speed away if she avoids it. So her kiting is not amazing against Hermit, but at least she has something overall. It's mostly just her healing abilities because Hermit does have some issues when people are healing. The more health that there is, the bigger the health pool, the more hits that Hermit has to deal to the team overall. Psychologist, for the same reason, she can just absorb hits, give more hits to the person that's kiting. If she's changing her charge correctly, it means that the person that's kiting can take oof, three, four, five hits, who knows. You'll often see Doctor picked as soon as someone knows that Hermit's being played because she can heal up all of the damage. Teammates being damaged left, right and center because one person gets hit, Doctor can deal with all of it. She can heal up chip damage, she can heal up everything and she doesn't really care too much about his abilities. She's not super strong at kiting against the Hermit, but that's not necessarily what you need to be doing with the Doctor. You just need to go around, make sure that everyone is healed and just play for the long game. Priestess also really, really strong against Hermit because she just gives everyone a 10% healing buff and she has the ability to use her global portals to get people around and just per portals in general do counter Hermit pretty well as long as the Hermit doesn't shock you before you use your portal. She can help other people kite as well, giving them even more time to be able to get away and Hermit does suffer when he does get long chases. Wow, I have a lot of characters to talk about so let's quickly breeze through these ones as fast as I possibly can. Prisoner, really really good because he can decode different cipher machines, ones that aren't connected. He can see the progress of how things are going around the map, see which ones are connected and which ones aren't. Dancer, really fast at decoding, also has the ability to dodge electric shocks when using her spin and just messing with him in tight areas that's something that Hermit could have some issues with as well. Little girl is very strong against Hermit because she can use her push away ability to get rid of the hunter that's coming towards someone that was just stunned. She's really really good as an assist but she also gives that big decoding buff as well if she's on someone's shoulder that could be quite good against the Hermit in the late game as well and she can get around the map with relative ease meaning that she can get to cypher machines faster that can annoy the Hermit even further. Enchantress is really good because she gets those stuns building up, she can do some tight kiting, she can assist with some balloon rescues without having to kind of get right on top of the hunter to be able to use her stuns that will really really annoy hermit to a big big extent toy merchant she can fly you don't care about electricity if you can fly. Entomologists can dodge those electric shocks relatively easily and even then if you get stunned in your bees there is quite a good chance that you're going to be far away enough from the hunter that the bees will be hit instead of you unless you're right in the middle of the bees. In that case then you probably will be hit. But the bees could protect you. You can also harass the hermit meaning that you can help a teammate that got stunned for example or help them kite as well. That's something that you can do. Getting people over windows faster as well gives you a chance to your teammates to be able to not get shocked or get shocked against the hermit she just has the ability to be able to quickly zoom left or right that you'll see very very often when going against a sculptor for example perfumer if used correctly means that you can perfume some of the hits that are taken she is a little bit less consistent than someone like doctor who can just heal up uh, but if you know that someone's about to get hit especially if you're in voice com with someone you can quickly just perfume the hit and then come back again and you'll be healed up to be able to give that person an extra shock also, you know, she's okay for the rescue. Acrobat can negate some of the abilities for Hermit, that is his whole thing. And he has the ability to quickly vault over windows without getting stunned or get away from a stun ability using one of the balls as well. Slowing him down, slowing down interactions, really, really strong. And Seer, just good because he can help a teammate out that just got stunned. They take another hit and Hermit really hates having to deal more hits. Finally, we're going to get here to Composer. Composer is the newest character that was added not too long ago back in December. And this means that he is a little bit more difficult to talk about as we haven't really seen him played incredibly often yet. We have yet to see how good he is overall. His abilities are not super controversial. His ability isn't like something that lets him stun or something. It means that he can just get away from the hunters and he's going to be in a similar vein to Weeping Clown. So I would say that Composer is only really strong against 
Bloody Queen, similar to and other hunters, of course, but Weeping Clown is strong against Bloody Queen because he can zoom away and so can Composer. So if you get that mirror landing on you and it's just far away enough for you not to get hit instantly, you can use your spe speed boost to quickly get away from that mirror and not get hit at all. Dream Witch could suffer. Dream Witch doesn't really want, wants the match to go on as long as possible. He's a fast decoder and he can base kite with an ability that does not kind of put him in any type of risk. And Helember as well. Really, really good kiter against Helember and he's a fast decoder too. Helember will have no time at all. If he doesn't find the composer, Cypher Machines will be popping all the time. If he finds the composer, the speed boost will keep him safe in the early game, meaning that Helember doesn't get his energy. He will suffer, not be able to get anyone in chair and won't be able to secure a down. Who is he weak against though? I do think there are some characters that he's weak against, although he's not as weak as Weeping Clown is because his ability does still continue even if he does get hit. Wu Chang ability is really good at countering uh, the composer because he can just use his bell to stop you from using your dash. He can also just catch up to you with his umbrella or his soul siphon ability. So I do think that um, Wu Chang is pretty good but not in the early game. In the early game Wu Chang will suffer but as soon as he gets any type of presence then you're going to be in big trouble if you're playing composer. Smiley face doesn't care how fast you're going because he'll just catch up with you with a rocket dash. You're not going faster than a smiley face sadly. Ripper also doesn't care. He'll hit you with a foggy blade he'll catch up with you with his main speed when he's got some presence he doesn't care about how fast you're going he's always going to be faster than you geisha wherever you go she goes with you i don't think i need to explain that either the same way that weeping clown doesn't do very good against the geisha if he uses his speed boost ability geisha will just follow behind or just wait until you get out of range and then just dash towards you even evil reptilian can just jump and catch up with you you do have an ability to go faster but it doesn't give you the ability to like transition halfway across the map for example the same way that the forward does meaning that evil reptilians one to two even three jumps will be able to catch up with you quite easily and then the last character i think that will be able to catch up with you is soul weaver because soul weaver can just put some of her webs around she could hit you with a slowdown ability by hitting you with the webs or she'll just catch up with you with no problems and there's nothing really that you can do as i said all of these are my personal opinions so if you guys think there's something different that you would change about this tier list of where you would put the characters which ones are strong against these characters and which ones are weak please tell me down in the comments i'm looking forward to that make sure you go and check out my weird tier lists that i'll be putting on the screen right now for you to watch because they're a lot of fun as well